yeah. today. I'm, I just want to share um, really the gospel. I, I just asked the Lord that uh, the worship would already confirm what I'm going to share, and really it did, you know. The worship was amazing. The words uh, just so confirmed what uh, the Lord has laid on my heart. So, yeah, um, awesome to be able to share this. Thanks, Ant. It's really what we share when we go to the Philippines, and um, it's really just the awesomeness of Jesus and his love for us. So I've just sort of, this like uh, maybe a bit of a, a summary of what I'm going to share, living in his presence with an open heaven. So I think that's all, all of our hearts is to, to be able to do that. Like uh, Les said, we are ambassadors from heaven. We are sons of daughters of God, and um, yeah, so that's, that's what the Father sees. So Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here this morning. We just thank you that you are the now presence of our Heavenly Father in and amongst us. You are the presence of Jesus. You are the Spirit of the Father. You are the Spirit of the Son. You are God made tangible to us. And Lord, we just, we just thank you for your beautiful, beautiful presence this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you shine your light into every one of our hearts this morning to reveal the Father to us, to reveal the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And as we see Jesus, we know that he fully reflects who we really are, that he's come to redeem our original identity children of God, born of our Heavenly Father. And as we behold His glory, we are changed into His image. We are restored back to our original identity from glory to glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just, I just declare my complete dependence on you this morning. Lord, you said that um, you will give us the words to speak. So, Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you give me the words that are spirit and life, and that um, as those words came this morning where people, all of us, are, chal have, are experiencing challenges that sometimes seem overwhelming, and everything seems to be shaking, Lord, but we know that you said that you will, you will allow everything to be shaken Till only that which cannot be shaken will remain, which is Jesus. And so we thank you for this awesome, for your awesome love for us. That because you love us so much, you are unwilling that we have shaky foundations. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I'm just going to share about um, the gospel really from, it sounds like a long message, but I'll try and have it short. The gospel from Genesis to Revelation. Because um, <laughs> the gospel didn't just begin at the cross. It actually began in the heart of the Father. <laughs> You're going to have to pray that, that I don't cry. <laughs> Such an awesome Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Anne, for the way you portray him to us. <laughs> awesome. So he's such an awesome father. And um, so we know that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One God. Amen. And we know that the Bible says in the beginning there was God. Awesome as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And um, one, one God. And um, because he is he is. He is a family, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and He is love. Just like any earthly parents, he, God desired to have family, to share this love. Just like any earthly parents, you know, when, when, parents get, when people get married, at some stage they, they dream of having children, of having somebody that they can share this love, and somebody that's going to look like them. So God dreamt of this, like a family that he could share this love. So we know that um, the Bible says, so God, um, he's the alpha, the omega. He's the beginning, the end. And so God is father. He is son. And Jesus is the visible expression of the invisible God. 
the more I just look at the Bible, you know, the Bible says in, in, one, in Isaiah 9, it says, He shall be called, speaking about Jesus, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. So the Counselor is the Holy Spirit. So in Jesus, there's Holy Spirit. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. So He's God, Everlasting Father. That's why Jesus said, when, when you see me, you see the Father. So he's not only the way to the Father, he is the Father made visible. So when I've asked before, I've said, um, Father, or I've said, yeah, I've said, uh, Holy Spirit, show me the Father. He said, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. So, yeah, Prince of Peace. So God is one Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And um, the Bible says the Spirit, Jesus said God is Spirit. Okay, so that's so awesome that, you know, we can't see him, but he's present. And Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to you. And he was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And um, so when the 40 days later or so at Pentecost, when the, presence, when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus had said to the disciples, I won't leave you as orphans. When the Holy Spirit came, um, they suddenly realized that Jesus was back with them, that the promise he'd made, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to you. And uh, Peter actually speaks there and he says, he quotes David and he says, I see the Lord forever before me at my right hand. So suddenly Jesus was back with them, invisible, but they, the same presence that had been with them when he walked with them as Jesus of Nazareth. So, yeah, awesome God. Then, so God decides, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit decide that they want a family. And so we know the story. They create heaven and earth. And specifically, you know, the Bible says heaven belongs to God. The earth he has made for man. And so quite important to understand. So often we, you know, we're always thinking about heaven. One day we're going to be with God in heaven. But Jesus also said, pray like this, our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the Bible says heaven belongs to God. The earth he's made for man. And so God made the earth and he, and he made specifically created Adam and Eve. And then we know the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden was a picture of heaven on earth, where God actually lived with man on the earth. And everything, as we know, everything was cool. Everything was so good, the way we'd like the world to be. <laughs> okay. Everything was so good. No crime, no violence, no um, poverty, no sickness. Okay. Everything was just so good. And God and man lived together, and they were actually living, they were reigning God's original plan. God and man together, reigning from heaven, from the invisible, over the earth. And we know God gave dominion to man to rule over the earth. And um, the Bible says Adam and Eve were naked and unashamed in God's presence. So they were so wrapped in God's presence. He was their identity. Just like small children, you know, when small children, their parents are their, their identity. Sometimes they're so confident, you know, as little kids because the parents are there. So they know if there's a problem, dad and mom, they're going to protect me, you know. I can be quite cheeky, you know, because dad and mom are here. And so, so Adam and Eve were naked and unashamed in God's presence. They weren't even aware that they were naked. Because they were, they, they, was, they were one with God. God also uses the illustration of a tree of life. Or, so God, Jesus is the tree of life and we are the branches. So just like a branch is part of the tree. So Adam and Eve, God created them to be one with him. So they were living in that union with God, not separate from God. We know the enemy came, deceived them. And they actually chose to be separate from God. Like the, the enemy said to them, you will be like God, but independent from God. And they believed that lie. And we know as a result, they had to leave the presence of God. And, um, and also they had to leave the garden. So suddenly, 
heaven and earth were no longer united. God put that um, angel at the gate to, to the Garden of Eden. So man could no longer access that garden. And the presence of God was no longer there. And immediately from a perfect place of rest, man had to start toiling in his own effort. Okay? So man was separated Man was separated from God, and man had to toil. But we know that right from the beginning, you know, God had a plan to reconcile man back to himself. And so he was, he was not happy with that situation because, you know, God's plan was basically to live together with man, to reign with man from heaven to earth as his family. And so, first of all, God gives the law to to uh, mankind through, through Moses. But um, the law, as we all know, the law was never meant for us. It was never meant for us to live by, by a set of uh, rules, okay? So God, the, the whole purpose of the law was to show us our sinfulness, to realize our need for God, okay? And the Bible says the law is a schoolmaster to lead us back to Christ. In other words, Man was unable to live um, the way God intended, separate from God. It was just impossible. That's why God had said to Adam and Eve, you eat of that tree of, being, of, of the knowledge of good and evil, of being independent from me, you will surely die. Okay? And from that moment, man started dying, spirit, soul, and body. But now the good news, as we all know, reconciliation... Okay, so God sent his son, 4,000 years after Adam and Eve, God sent his son, okay, to reconcile us back to himself. Now, you know, the, when we look at the word, we actually see that what actually happened at the cross is, is actually far bigger than often what we realize. So God actually restored everything that was lost through the fall, through the cross. Everything was restored. Okay, so the first thing that happened, I need some people. <laughs> Bruce, can I have you and uh, Nick? <laughs> I need three guys. And Johannes, you're not busy. <laughs> Just going to use you guys as an example. He's the tallest. <laughs> can you stand at the back? Okay. Johannes and Bruce in the middle. And Nick in front. Okay, so here's a picture of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but one God, okay, eternally one. You cannot, you know, wherever, wherever <laughs> amen, <laughs> cool, <laughs> you like the Holy Spirit, eh? <laughs> so, eternally one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, wherever the Father is, this is so amazing, Jesus is there, okay, you'll never find the Father without Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, the Father's there, the Holy Spirit is there. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, Jesus is there, the Father's there. God is eternally one, okay? And God is family and God is love. So, you cannot ask now. Um, sorry, I don't know all the names. John. What's that, John? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, John is a picture of, of mankind. Now, as I said, what happened at the cross is actually far more awesome than we realize. The Bible says that God chose, Colossians 1.20, He chose to reconcile all things in Christ, both things in heaven and on earth. So Jesus is, He's, the, he's called the last Adam. We know we all come from the first Adam. Through the first Adam, we all fell into sin. The Bible says through the last Adam, we will all be made alive. Through the first Adam, we all die. The last Adam, we'll all be made alive. So, because Jesus is a full representation of the Father, okay, he's fully God. So, the Bible says, Colossians 1, from, I think, verse 16, it says, all things were created by him, through him, the Amplified, I'm quoting the Amplified, in him and for him. So, Jesus created all things, both things in heaven and on earth, both visible and invisible. And not only by him, but also in him. 
because God is beyond his creation. Okay, so the whole of the visible creation, the whole of the invisible creation is in Jesus, and Jesus is in the Father. The Bible says that he came out of the very bosom of the Father, the very heart of the Father. He came to show us the Father. But all things were created by him, through him, in him, and for him. And so, John, and the Bible also says that we were all baptized into the body of Christ, okay? So, uh, John, if you can come between Nick and, and Bruce. So, John is, a, <laughs> John is a picture of all of mankind. Also, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.19 says that, we were, that uh, it was God in Christ reconciling the world to himself not counting their sins against them, but freely forgiving them. So the cross was actually included the whole of mankind, in fact, all of creation. So when Jesus died, okay, you'll never, never forget uh, Bruce Jesus, <laughs> and Johanna's father, and Nick, Holy Spirit. Sure, Nick, you're full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I just got whacked there. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so, so when, when Jesus died, the whole of creation died, okay, because he's God. So the cross is far bigger than we realized. When Jesus died, all of creation died, okay? So 2 Corinthians 5 from verse 13 says, when Paul says this, he says, if I'm mad, it is for God, because he gets this revelation, if I'm in my right mind, it's for you. Okay, so pray that I keep in my right mind. <laughs> so, because he says, I'm convinced if one died for all, all died. Okay, so everyone. And so, uh, Paul in Romans 5, he says, 5 verse 10, he says, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so in other words, we were all included in this death. Like I said, Colossians 1.20, it was God in Christ reconciling the world. No, not that one, sorry. It was uh, God chose to reconcile all things to himself, both things in heaven and on earth, as through the cross he made peace with man. So that's why when Jesus came, when the angels announced his birth, they said, we bring you good news of great joy for all of mankind. So in other words, this reconciliation was for everyone. Okay, so when, when Christ died, all creation died. When Christ rose from the dead, there was a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Now this happened, we see Peter speaking about it, and Revelation 13 speaks about Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. So it was outside God, in his foreknowledge, knew that man was going to fall. And so outside of time... Christ was crucified. And Peter talks about it, that it was this, the cross was made visible for us in our time 2,000 years ago. So, okay, so everyone was reconciled. Now, Jesus, foreseeing this, speaking to the disciples, he said, in that day when the Holy Spirit comes, you will know that I, Jesus, am in... Sorry, sorry, I'm... Um, I, Jesus, am in the Father, you are in me, and I, Holy Spirit, am in you. Okay, so we are all, we are all in Christ, okay? Christ is in the Father, and Holy Spirit is in us. So the Bible says we are hidden with Christ in God. So we are part, through the cross, we were reconciled to the family of God. So it shows also that all of us, before the foundation of the world, the Bible says that we were chosen in Christ. We come from God. So irrespective of people's faith, whether they're Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, unbelievers, agnostics, we all come from God. There is only one Father. And Paul, speaking to the unbelievers in Athens, he says that we are his offspring. And he says, you know, we need to now repent, change our minds and believe. Because we are his offspring. We come from God, and um, in him we live and move and have our being. So through the cross, 
God reconciled us back to himself because mankind had chosen to be separate from God. But he reconciled us. The Bible also says he recreated us. And our flesh, this is an awesome revelation, is that our flesh was actually cut off. So your fallen self was actually cut off at the cross. So everything that was fallen was removed at the cross. And we know that we were fully forgiven. The Bible says, by one sacrifice he has forever completely cleansed and perfected us. And he's given us a brand new life. I love this in Ephesians 2, 5 says, when Christ rose from the dead, it says we received the same new life with which he was quickened. So Jesus received at the cross, when he rose from the dead, he received a brand new life. Jesus actually died. When he came out the grave, he received a brand new life from the Father through the Holy Spirit. And it says that because we were in him, we received that same new life, the life of Jesus. And so that's why the Bible says that uh, if one died for all, all died. Consequently, it says we see no man after the flesh. For if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Okay. Now, obviously, the, the gospel is that we've been included in Christ. But the Bible says the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds, that they will not see the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. But it says for, for us who have believed, it says God has shone his light into our hearts for the illumination of the glory of God glory and majesty of God in the face of Jesus. So in other words, every one of us that are born again, we've had a revelation of the cross. So actually what happens is when the Holy Spirit shines His light, we hear the gospel, He shines His light into our hearts, we're actually seeing the cross. The Holy Spirit showing us the cross. Now remember I said the cross was actually before the foundation of the world. So the cross has always been there. So the Holy Spirit, when we, when we, get, when we um, are born again, we actually experience a revelation of the cross. So we see, thanks guys for your patience. <laughs> Thank you, okay, can you sit down. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So, through the, so when we look at the, so sorry, the Holy Spirit shows us the cross and and we experience a new birth. Suddenly, because Jesus came to redeem the image of God in man. So he came to show us who we really are. So he is the full expression of the glory of God. So he came to show mankind our genesis, where we come from. And he reconciled us to the Father through the cross. So when the Holy Spirit shines his light into our hearts, we have a revelation of our genesis. The Bible says we see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And then he becomes our mirror and he reflects who we are. So he unveils who we really are. So 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, As we behold his glory, we are transformed into his image. So, so through the cross, just to summarize again, through the cross, all our sins, at the cross, all our sins were forgiven. So I just want to say to all of you today, all your sins are forgiven. Everything, past, present, future. Okay, God dealt with sin at the cross completely. And he, the Bible says your fallen nature was removed. Everything that's not God was removed at the cross. And you received a brand new life, the life of Jesus the same life that Jesus has, okay? And um, also the Bible says you were healed. Now, as the Holy Spirit shows us the cross by revelation, as he shines his light into our hearts, we first of all have a revelation that God is our Father. I remember when I, I was in, um, actually in DCC Church, uh, Fred Roberts, and when I went forward and I said, today... Father, I want to know you. And I surrendered my life. And when I walked back, I suddenly had a revelation. God is my Father. And I got such a hunger for the Word. And I just knew 
that I was a son of God. So it's, a, it's revelation, like we all know. But also healing, amazing thing. At the cross, we were all healed. So God actually reconciled, recreated the whole of mankind through the cross. And, but as we, we need revelation of it to participate in that life. So we cannot have, the Bible says, natural man perceives nothing of, of God. So we have to have revelation to be included in this life. And so, and obviously there's a participation as well from our side. So, so um, healing as well, the Bible says, by his stripes we were healed. So God actually recreated the whole cosmos. He, by his stripes we were healed. So just um, if we look at, at an example, Moses, that's like, I don't know, 3,000 years before Christ. Moses, um, God says to Moses, um, the, the Israelites had been rebellious and, and the serp, God had allowed serpents to sting them in the desert. And many of them were dying. And so God said, make a serpent on a pole. And when they looked at that serpent on a the pole, they were healed. So that was already a picture of the cross, which shows that the cross was outside of time, was already applicable outside of time. Also, Jesus, when he, right at the beginning of his ministry, the Bible says he, it says when evening came, Matthew 8, when evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and he cast out the demons, he healed all the sick. And it says, so that what was written in the prophet Isaiah would be fulfilled, truly he took upon himself our weaknesses and infirmities. This was before the cross. Jesus was healing and healing people. Okay, and then the same applies, for, applies to um, provision. So, you know, I really, I'm a firm believer that God, I think the Bible also testifies of that, that in the last days... God is going to set us free from the spirit of mammon. Okay, that just that, you know, that um, exodus is actually a picture of the church. And 1 Corinthians 10 speaks about that those things, the book of Exodus was written for our instruction. And we know that the, the book of Exodus is about how God, through Moses, delivered the Israelites from Egypt and took them through the desert into the promised land. And um, so Egypt, Egypt um, as, as um, God, as, as Moses approached Pharaoh, uh, telling, telling Pharaoh that God wants, his pe wants you to let his people go, Pharaoh kept on increasing the burdens. And um, so the Israelites actually like, you know, they eventually got quite offended with God. And even Moses said, from the beginning, you know, since you told me to speak to the Israelites, you have not delivered them. In fact, their burdens have increased. And it was almost like Moses was a bit upset with God. But we know how, what eventually happened. So I really believe that's a type and shadow of the time we're living in now. And God is... You know, from the, from the time that Adam and Eve left the garden, toiling started. Because suddenly man became self-conscious and they, look, they, they were dependent on their own human effort and they were dependent on the resources of the earth. But God actually never intended that. He always intended us to look to Him as our provider. So through, if we look in the wilderness... You know, God, fed, he actually, the Bible says, he rained down bread from heaven. So he was feeding the Israelites with supernatural provision, showing them, I'm your provider, not this world, not this, okay? So man had become so dependent on this world, and even now, we are so dependent on this world. But I really believe we're living in a time where God's going to bring us back to an understanding, and there's a beautiful scripture in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 13, 14, that speaks about, it says that um, it was not God's will that the nations toil for the fire. So, you know, even Solomon says, like, this, this life is meaningless, like, we just work, 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 and then we die. What's the whole point? 
So God never intended that. So he says, but the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And I really believe, you know, God is bringing understanding of this full gospel to us so that we can come back again to, to rest. So he's inviting us back into that rest. And the rest comes when we realize God is our provider, not this, the, 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 uh, these world's resources, and we can rest. So just um, further on the cross, I was speaking about reconciliation. Now, the other thing that happened at the cross, as I said, we received a brand new life, the life of Jesus. And Paul speaks about it in Galatians 2.20. Sometimes, you know, the, the translators of the Bible have not fully translated the original Greek or Hebrew because of experience. So Paul says in Galatians 2.20, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Okay, speaking about the cross, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And then he goes on and he says, now, and now, I, now I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the newer translations say, I live by faith in the Son of God. But what it's actually saying is, I am crucified. My flesh, my fallen nature has been crucified. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. I now live by his faith. So it's literally, and so Paul speaks about Colossians 1, 27. He says, the mystery hidden for ages, which is now revealed, which is Christ in you. Okay, so literally every one of us, our, Colossians 3 also says, Seek the things that are above, for your real life has been hidden with Christ in God, when Christ who is your life. So there, there are not two people living in you. There's just Jesus. That's so awesome, guys, because, you know, we sometimes, because of our, because we make mistakes, we become so aware of the fallen nature, so we identify with that. But Paul says, reckon yourself, Romans 6, reckon yourselves dead to sin. Okay? Because you died. He says, do you not know? All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried with him. And so that just as Christ rose from the dead, he says, we can walk in newness of life. So he says, consider yourselves dead to sin, alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with the Father. Literally, in other words, we are, now, we are now partakers. Peter speaks about we have become partakers of Christ's divine nature. So we were baptized into Christ. Christ is in a perfect relationship with the Father. So we are all in Christ. And Christ is in us through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we are a new creation. Christ is now our identity. We no longer live like Paul says, but Christ lives in us. That is what the Father sees. You know, we still identify ourselves largely by the lives we lead. You know, I'm, I'm not that successful in my finances. You know, I'm battling in relationships. And that's what we identify with. But more and more, as we identify with Christ and understand the finished work of the cross... We, the Bible says, we are transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. Amen. So we are literally a new creation. So I often say, you know, when we speak to the people in the Philippines, we say, if we all want to see Jesus, but the Bible says we are the body of Christ. So every one of us is a unique expression of Jesus. So if you want to see Jesus, look at the person next to you. I mean, literally, I mean, isn't that amazing? So we are the body of Christ. We are. He's chosen long before the cross. God says, I've chosen Zion to be my dwelling place forever. Here will I find my rest. Yeah. So God, God's chosen us to be his dwelling place. And you know, in um, Revelation chapter 21, John sees, he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now we often think maybe that's still coming. But it says, I saw the new Jerusalem all dressed like a bride coming down from heaven. And it's speaking about the church. So where are we born from? The Bible says we are born from above. Okay? 
So he's seeing a picture of the church coming down from heaven. The Bible says we are not born of mortal origin, but immortal through the ever-living word of God. So we are born from, of God. And um, so he sees this church coming down from heaven, and he hears a voice saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. And then a bit later in Revelation 21, it speaks about the church. It says the city, it's, the gates of the city will be open 24-7. Always open. Okay? Like we know, the church is open. Anybody can come in. But it says, and it says the nations will be around that city. And then it speaks about, it says that, but no one will be able to come into that city that is not basically born again. So in other words, you come into that city by revelation of the cross. You are born again and you now, it's not, you don't become a church member. You become part of the city through being born into it as a new creation. Okay. And then the, the last thing about the cross, you know, we, we know that through, through the fall, Adam and Eve were separated from God. Heaven and earth were separated. And, but the Bible also says that when Jesus, when he said it's finished, it says the veil of the temple was torn in two. The veil in the temple symbolized separation of God and man. So suddenly the access to God was again open. The access to heaven was again open. And so Paul speaking about Hebrews in 12, 22, he says, we have come to the new Jerusalem. And this is, you guys are the new Jerusalem. How's that? You are the dwelling place of God. Isn't that awesome? And Christ lives in you. The, full, the Bible says, in that body, in you, Bruce, <laughs> the fullness of God, in you, Tyrant, the fullness, his fullness. How awesome is that? When you walk into a room, the fullness of God has just walked in. Okay. I love what Les says, you know, angels, you know, we are surrounded, we have an open heaven, so we have come to the new Jerusalem, okay, so you are the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, so like Leslie said this morning, we are ambassadors from heaven, so we are surrounded, so heaven is not a faraway place, heaven is right here, you know, God says, he says, if, if we imagine this being God's throne, he says, heaven is God's throne, earth is his footstool. That means heaven is right here. Okay, because earth is his footstool. That means heaven's right here. So heaven's also the highest heavens. God is everywhere, but it's also right here. So it says we are surrounded by angels. So heaven is just an invisible place. And so we are surrounded. We are citizens. When Christ arose from the dead, we ascended with him. We sat down with him. So we are citizens of heaven and ambassadors from heaven. By the way, that means that we are not dependent on this earth's resources. Okay. If we are ambassadors from heaven, you know, ambassadors get paid by the country that they come from. Amen. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we are ambassadors from heaven. So God wants to open our eyes, like I said, to not live anymore dependent on these resources of this earth, but to live from his presence. The Bible says in his presence, fullness of joy. At the, his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Okay, there's no lack in God. So just wanted to say, you know, more and more the Holy Spirit is showing me that, you know, Jesus is God. So he's the Alpha, the Omega. So John, looking at him in Revelation chapter 19, he says, I saw one seated on the throne. It says, from whose face and from whose presence heaven and earth flees away, and no place is found for them. So actually, in the, the, God is the all. All of creation, both visible and invisible, is in him. And God has reconciled all creation back to himself. When there was rebellion, basically Adam and Eve leaving God, choosing, choosing to be independent, God has reconciled the whole of mankind back to himself. 
And the Bible says in the last days, God has chosen to consummate all things in Christ, both things in heaven and on earth. So actually, that's why John looks at Jesus. He looks at God on the throne, and he sees heaven and earth disappear because there is actually only God. So when Jesus came out the grave, everything fallen was crucified. Out the grave came only Jesus, and all of us in him, recreated in him. Okay? So every one of us is a unique expression of Jesus Christ. So when he looks at us, you know, if you read Song of Solomon, he's actually overawed. He looks at us and he says, turn your eyes from me. You've overcome me. Because he sees his glory in us. He sees who we really are. We are truly sons of God. And his fullness lives inside of us. The full glory is inside of us. Now, just the last thing I wanted to speak about is the, the, the appearing of Christ. You know, the Bible says that Christ will appear. But Colossians 3 says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will appear with him. So often I used to think that as well. Jesus is going to appear up there, and I'm going to be down here, and I'm going to see him coming. But the, the Bible says we are his body. So <laughs> when he appears, we will appear with him because we are his body. So he's coming. Also it says in Thessalonians, he's coming to be glorified in his saints. So we are all waiting because we don't understand the awesomeness of the cross. We are all waiting for the second coming of Christ, and he will fix everything. But the Bible says, Romans 8, 19, the whole of creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. So it's like, in other words, manifest Christ, because we are the body of Christ. So he's coming to be glorified in his saints. And so Isaiah 60, and I'm just, just going to pray that and then close. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For nations will, and nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So Lord, we just thank you this morning, Holy Spirit, that you shine your light into every one of our hearts to reveal the glory and majesty of God in the face of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that as we see Jesus, we see who we really are. We see our genesis. We see that we come from God, that we are born of God, that he truly is our heavenly father, that we are unlimited. Like your word says, that you may know what, what is uh, the, the fullness of his power inside of us, the immeasurable, surpassing, unlimited power that is inside of you as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. So we thank you, Lord, just for revelation of, of our heavenly Father tonight today, and of our sonship, of the fact that we are healed, of the fact that we have been fully provided for, the fact that Christ is our life. We no longer live. Christ lives in us, that we are partakers of his divine nature, that we are in Jesus. He is in the Father. Holy Spirit, you are in us. We are one spirit with Jesus. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. And the whole of creation is waiting for you to manifest who you really are, Son of God. Manifest the presence of Jesus in this world. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Um, as a... Since we've been sharing, it's just amazing that the early fathers contended for the truth so forcefully. They, they wouldn't budge off the truth, you know, and they wrote it down. They wrote letters, and I shared last week on, on um, Gnosticism, but what I forgot to share is there were two, two things they fought. One was Gnosticism, and the other was legalism, and those were the things they just came against in those letters, and, and they were like, like 
um, bull terriers after a tire. They were not going to let go, you know. And today we just had a beautiful wash of the truth. And what, and even as Gunz was sharing now, the one thing you've just got to go, I believe. I believe. Because that's, that's, that's what releases the illumination, is I believe. And I, I just want to say, take every ounce of your spiritual energy right now and just go, I believe. And Holy Spirit will bring you revelation on all things. Even Paul said, you know, if you differ in your opinion, don't worry, Holy Spirit will show you. He wasn't saying he'll show you what I was saying. He'll show you what you need to hear and know right now. So he's he just, just, just receive the truth because the, the truth leads to change, which is repentance. And repentance is... I was going this way, I was thinking that, I'm now aligning with the way of the Lord and with the truth. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for that, Lord. And even as we go to the table, Lord, can we just feast? Can we feast and can we fellowship? Just this beautiful place of revelationary truth. Can we just go and, like, you know, if you, can have, if you just take a little two-by-four corner, supernaturally, it will um, um, sustain you for the rest of your life. If you just eat a few crumbs of Jesus, you'll live forever. <laughs> and he has put before us a table. And um, just the, the truth is a table that we feast on. And now we go and just remember, we go to the symbol which unlocks the supernatural. And I want to give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this word. May, it just, may we feast of it for just the rest of our lives. It's just the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the reality of what you've done. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, that's why it's a scandal. It's just way too good. And we want to thank you, Father, just that you've immersed us in the scandal of your good news, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that. Amen. <laughs> if you need prayer, you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, um, come stand up on the carpet. Someone would love to pray with you. Um, we're family, so let's go and feast at the table. Gun thanks, that was amazing. Just like a big banquet. <laughs> awesome. Uh, if you just want to sit in your chairs, you're welcome to sit in your chairs. <laughs> thanks. Uh, good to see you. Enjoy the rest of Mother's Day, moms. And um, we'll see you next week. The beautiful reality next week, Trish will be sharing. So we're going to just continue. We're going to, we've had the meal. Now we're going to get the perfume. It's going to come in. <laughs> awesome. Bless you guys. Amen.